हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन। टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट द डिटेक्टर रिस्पॉन्स टाइम सो वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट द रिस्पॉन्स टाइम सो एज टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ फास्ट माय डिटेक्टर इज वर्किंग सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्ट्रक्चर we have already talked about the pin photodiode in the pin photodiode we have the p region we have the i region which is also called the intrinsic region then we have the n region the width of the intrinsic region is taken to be w and we are providing the reverse bias voltage vrb to the p region here we are following some light with the energy h nu on the pin photodiode now here you can see we have the carriers generated in all of the three regions right so we have the positive type of carriers which are holes which are generated in the n region which has to move towards the i region with the diffusion velocity now the negative type of carrier that is the electron which is generated in the p region and it is again moving towards the i region the i region is fully covered as a depletion region right so the electrons is moving towards the depletion region with the diffusion velocity inside i also we have both positive as well as the negative charges the electrons as well as holes are generated but these are here moving with the drift velocity so we all know that the diffusion velocity is very less as compared to the drift velocity right so the time taken for the charges to move from the drift velocity is very less as compared to the time taken by the charge for moving in the same distance by the diffusion velocity so the total current density for flowing through the reverse bias we know with the help of these charges when this positive charge or the hole is moving to the p region and the negative charge the electron is moving to the n region it is going to generate an external current right in the circuit so the external current which will be having a total current density it is dependent upon both of the things it depends upon the diffusion current as well as the drift current so j total is the total current density is equal to the drift current density plus diffusion current density right we have to understand what is jdr and we have to understand what is jdiff as well so this is a diffusion current density this is a drift current density so now jdr is given as ip upon a right so this is the current and this is the photodiode area so it will be represented as q phi not phi not is the incident photon flux per unit area so q into phi not 1 minus e raised to power minus alpha s into w w was the width width of the i region and alpha is the absorption coefficient right so now what is this flux photon flux per unit area phi not phi not is represented as p not 1 minus rf upon a h nu right so now here if i consider the p region to be very thin in the p region it is if it is very thin very less number of electrons would be generated over this region so the diffusion of electrons can be neglected if the n region is thicker lot of holes would be there diffusion of holes would be taking place and it is significant so we have to understand this diffusion of the holes which is passing through here so now here if i consider p to be very thin diffusion current due to the presence of holes only is there and the diffusion equation can be represented as dp del square pn upon del x square minus pn minus pn not upon tau p plus gx is equal to 0 where gx is phi not alpha s e raised to power minus alpha s into x right so x is a distance where the uh, hole or the electron is generated in this specific case the hole is generated at a particular distance from the diffusion layer and this distance is x now dp is the whole diffusion coefficient pn is the whole concentration pn not is the equilibrium whole concentration and tau p is the excess whole lifetime 
so with the help of this equation if i simplify this equation you can just remember how we have simplified right so don't remember the intermediate steps because it will be becoming complex for you then so just remember this equation j diffusion will be equal to q phi naught alpha s lp upon 1 plus alpha s lp e raised to power minus alpha s w plus q p naught dp upon lp right so this is how we can simplify this equation now this is my j diffusion this is my j drift so the total current density is j drift plus j diffusion we can add this equation let's suppose this is my equation 1 and this is my equation 2 if i add equation 1 and 2 i am going to get the j total which will be equal to q phi naught 1 minus e raised to power alpha s w upon 1 plus alpha s lp plus q p and naught dp upon lp right so this is how we can have the addition of these two equations to find out the total current density now coming to the response time so this is how we can have a mathematical uh, understanding about the movement of the current with the help of the diffusion as well as the drift current the total out outward current can be calculated with the help of this equation and it depends upon the excess whole lifetime so now coming to the response time again the response time depends upon the transit time of the photocarriers in the depletion region how much time the photocarriers are taking in the depletion region so in the depletion region photocarriers are moving with the drift velocity so now the time taken for the carrier to move with the drift velocity is the first uh, parameter over which my response time will be dependent and the second parameter would be the diffusion time obviously if uh, we have the carrier which is generated outside the depletion region then we are taking into consideration the diffusion time of the photocarriers which are generated outside the depletion region and after that we are going to take in consideration the rc time constant because the rc time constant is also going to give me some delay so rc time constant of the photodiode as well as its associated circuit is going to give me some parameter by which i have some delays introduced into my circuit right so the photodiode parameters overall if i classify all of the parameters which are responsible for the response time or the delay present in the output generated of the photodiode are the absorption coefficient first of all you can see in this equation as well we have alpha s so the current density depends upon alpha s the response time depend upon the alpha s depletion region width w if i have larger def depletion region width the time taken uh, by the drift velocity also to cross this larger depletion width is higher right so then we have the junk junction and the package capacitances we have already talked about the structure of the of the photodiode with the help of the amplifiers as well as with the help of the photodiode so we have the amplifier connected in series with the photodiode and with the photodiode we have some capacitances we have the junction capacitance of the photodiode we have the package capacitance of the photodiode both of them are giving some rc time constant or delay to the given response then we have the load resistance the load resistance when in, it is combined with the junction or package capacitance it is going to give me the delays then we have the input resistance of the amplifier as well as series resistance of the diode all of them are contributing to the delays present in the response of the photodiode so we can see the transit time can be given with the formula w upon vd where vd is the carrier drift velocity w is the depletion region width so in some cases i will be having the full depletion region width covered but in some cases the full i is not made into the depletion region right so then what happens so we are going to see all of the cases what is the case when i have higher input capacitance what is what would be the case when would i would be having lesser input capacitance so how the output is going to change we are going to see this with the help of the rise time and the fall time so rise time and the fall time of the detector output when the detector is illuminated with the step input step input is like this so we are going to have a step input and we are going to illuminate 
our photodiode with the help of the step input and then we are going to observe the outputs. So rise time is a time taken by the output to reach from 10% to 90% of its output value. So if the output value is V, this is 100%, the time taken from 10%. So this is the initial time, this is the time taken by 90%. So this is the time which is called the rise time. Obviously the fall time is the time taken by this output to fall from the 90% to the 10% value. So this is the fall time. So I hope you understood what is rise time, what is fall time, right? So with the help of both of them, I can specify the output of a photo detector. So we have different cases now. So we are going to see how the output is going to change when we have the different cases. So we have when we have the fully depleted eye region, you can see when we have the fully depleted region, the full eye region is converted into the depletion region. We have the equal rise time and the fall time. So fully depleted TR is equal to TF, right? So now we are taking a consideration that the W width is very much greater than 1 upon alpha s where alpha is the absorption coefficient. So at this condition the output becomes really fast. Right? So now here this is the condition when width is very much greater than 1 upon alpha s, width is very much greater than 1 upon alpha s. So you can see the time taken for it to reach the maximum velocity is very less. Now here you can see this is the response time when I have the partially depleted region. So in the partially depleted eye region, you can see up to the 50% I am having very less response time. Up to 50% of the output voltage I can reach in a very fast manner but after that from 50 to 100% uh, attainment of the voltage I am taking too much time. So this is the case for the partially depleted region. Now here this is the case when I have W very much greater than 1 upon alpha s and we have the small junction capacitance. When we have the small junction capacitance you can see we have the rise time and the fall time which are not much high and we are going to get the faster response in this case. Now let's suppose the case when we have the W is greater than 1 upon alpha s we are getting the faster attainment of the uh, of the 100% V but we have the large CJ because of the large capacitance we are not going to get the output easily so output generation will be giving me a lot of time so you can see from here up till here the output is generated really fast but from here up till here we require a lot of time for the generation of the output so now here we are considering that all of the most of the carriers are generated in the depletion region only and this is the reason we are getting the faster response here we are taking the diffusion time as well as the drift time so here up till here we have the drift time and from here we are taking the diffusion parameter in the consideration and we all know that the diffusion is a slower process than the drift. So you can see with the help of diffusion how long it is taking to generate the output. Now coming to the W is very less than 1 upon alpha s. Again here in this condition because the width is very less here I will be taking a lot of time for the generation of the current with the help of the diffusion carriers. So now here up till here I am getting the fast response but from here because the width of the depletion region is very less a lot of carriers are generated in the diffusion region and they have to move with the diffusion region and this re represents the diffusion right and here it represents the drift. So with the help of drift velocity the carriers are moving very fast but with the help of diffusion the carriers are taking a lot of time and due to which we are getting the slow response in the falling edge. So the fall time is becoming very high in these two cases. Now what is the CJ? The junction capacitance can be represented as epsilon s. Epsilon s is the permittivity of the semiconductor. A is the area of the semiconductor and W is the width of the depletion region, right? So I hope you understood what is the CJ. Now the detector will be acting like a RC low pass filter. I told you the output is dependent upon the resistance as well as the capacitance. So it is having the resistance and capacitance which is 
similar like a low pass filter so it is going to give me the output with the pass band of the bandwidth is equal to 1 upon 2 pi rt ct so this is how i am going to get the output so this is the pass band right so this is the bandwidth that i am talking about so if i have higher ct so the bandwidth is going to become less and I'm going to get the faster response. If I have lesser CT, the bandwidth is going to become high and I'm going to get the slower response. So I hope you understood the working or the response time of the photodiodes. I hope you are now in a situation to handle this question if it comes in your paper. So if you have any doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and also give me your feedback. Thank you so much.